Hello, hello, everybody. So we have about eight minutes until the earnings call starts. Um, first, I want to go through some of the preliminary things uh, in their earnings uh, release that are kind of interesting, kind of concerning. Um, so first of all, the revenue is up 37% quarter over quarter. However, that's not actually very impressive because the uh, cost of goods sold is up about 41%. So essentially what that means is inflation and also some uh, cold storage problems forced up the price of ingredients and distribution and storage more than their revenue increased. So Tattoo Jeff raised prices, but they also had to spend even more to make the same amount of goods. That's not a huge, that's not a huge win. Um, also, branded product revenue is only up about 21%. So uh, if you don't know, Tattooed Chef originally, back in like 2009, was focused on private label brands because it's an easier place to start as a company. Um, then they sort of expanded more into the branded Tattooed Chef products uh, later on, much more recently in the past few years, really, is when they've tried to put a lot of emphasis into that. So they still have the private label brands. They still have some food service sales. Um, those two areas are, you know, not quite half of the revenue growth. Um, so, yeah, it's not a I'm not hugely excited about these revenue numbers because, again, you know, the, the cost of goods sold is up more than the revenue and the branded revenue is not even up as much as the overall revenue. And the branded revenue is really what you want to look for because the private label stuff Private label is not a great business. It's sort of a commodity type business and commodity type businesses in general underperform. They may have particular periods of time where they do well, but over long periods of time, they generally do not, they do, not do well. They underperform the market pretty substantially. So um, I'm pretty much only interested in the branded product revenue and that is only up 21%, which is about half of the amount that their cost of goods sold go up, uh, went up. That doesn't even account for the fact that their um, operating expenses also about doubled from 2020 to 2021. Um, and they have not really had any projections of bringing those down in this quarter. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a bit concerned. Um, also, net loss per share is at $0.22 cents per share, which is up from $0.11 cents per share in 2021, despite the fact that during 2021... Uh, the shares got diluted by about 100%. So we've essentially quadrupled the net loss per share if you were to look at the old share numbers from a year ago. Again, not, not hugely inspiring to me. Um, the net revenue is, is $72 million for the quarter, or not net revenue, that's the gross revenue. Uh, so if you multiply that out, you would get, you know, what, 144, 280, uh, 288 million in revenue for the year if there was no growth. But the projections that Tattooed Chef has put out for a quarter for uh, the full year of 2022 are 280 to 285. So this projection, their full year 2022 outlook, actually incorporates a slight decrease in the coming quarters. It, it basically anticipates no future revenue growth from quarter one for the rest of the year and actually a slight decrease. That's pretty concerning to me. Um, also, the gross margins dipped a bit. They were at 13.7% last quarter, uh, 2021. Now they're at 11.3%. And you know they anticipate some of that going away as they bring a new cold storage solution online. But still, you know these, these gross profits are not not hugely impressive. So the fact that their their revenue growth is sort of um, uninspiring it seems to be driven primarily by inflation rather than unit sales, and is not entirely concentrated in the branded products. Combined with the fact that their revenue, their their margins, you know, were not fantastic to begin with, and now have been slashed a little bit. It's not a pretty picture. Um, I, I like Tattooed Chef, uh, some of their products, not all of their products, but I like some of them. I think the company has potential. Um, but I think right now there's a whole lot of warning signs in their finance. Um, another, another sort of potential risk is that in the 2021 annual report, the company said that their current advertising of branded products was limited and that it was mostly in social media and that there was an opportunity for more marketing. But their operating expenses are already enormous, and they do not break down how much of that is marketing. 
but typically when you see operating expenses expand at the rate that tattooed chefs have been, um, that's typically because of marketing to some degree, marketing or development expenses in the case of like a software company. So uh, yeah, it would be really nice if they offered some more transparency into what they're spending so much money on because uh, if they're spending, you know, like they're, they're doubling operating expenses without even doubling revenue. Um, and that's apparently still leaving them with space to expand their marketing. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit put off by just how sort of uh, bad the finance situation seems. I, I own quite a bit of uh, Tattoo Jeff. Um, it had sort of been a passive holding. I, I had bought it, I think, uh, I don't even remember when, but uh, on sort of a whim. Um, and hadn't done enough of a deep dive. And now that I am doing more of a deep dive into the finance, it's it's kind of concerning. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's look at a little bit more here. They do tell us that their uh, projected marketing expenses is 27 to 32 million for this year. Um, again, they don't break down exactly how they're gonna spend that. Uh, I would anticipate that this is actually gonna get exceeded. Um, capital expenditures of about 20 million. So again, like this, this doesn't ex account for a lot of their expenses. It really seems like the management is having trouble scaling, operating as a public company. I'm not quite sure because again, they don't provide a, a ton of clarity on what they're spending these money on. Like why are the operating expenses just surging? I don't know. I would really like to know though. You know, investments focused on automation and robotics, great. But I, I mean, it sort of feels maybe a little bit premature, uh, given that, you know, they're still sort of very young. If you were to look at their gross margin as that was all the margin that they had, right? If their gross margin was equal to their operating margin, then they would be making about $32 million a year, which is not a ton, you know, and, and that is not the case, right? Actually, operating margin is much worse. It's basically negative because they're spending a bunch of money. But if it was the same as the gross margin, you would still only be making about $32 million a year. So you can think about that like if all of the marketing and special expenses that are, you know, a part of a growing company, if you took all of that out and the company was just operating, you know, with peak efficiency, they would be making about $32 million a year. And that's about, you know, a 20 so even after the the prices dropped on Tattoo Jeff, that would leave us at about a 20x um, earnings to market cap, which seems a bit pricey, uh, you know, for a company that's revenue is not growing that much and that has the sort of spending problems that Tattoo Jeff seems to have. In any case, those are all things to be aware of as we go into the call. Let me uh, check. They should be starting in just a moment. All right, not quite. Let's go back to their... Oh yeah, this is also in interesting. This is uh, Open Insider. So Open Insider is a great website if you've never been here. Um, it's essentially, you can look at all of the transactions of directors, officers, etc. cetera. Uh, it is nice to see that we don't have a lot of dumping, right? So basically there's only two real transactions that we have since the company uh, became publicly traded. By the way, if you didn't know, Tattoo Jeff went public via SPAC, not IPO. So that typically means, you know, there's a, a, a solid 10 to 20% of the company at least that's being held by people waiting to dump it typically. Um, in any case, we don't have a lot of that. What we do have a lot of are these grants. So this is where all the dilution is coming from, right? You can see here, CFO was granted 300,000 shares. You know, back here, uh, you have some pretty enormous grants, 28 million shares, 500,000 shares, 1.5 million shares. These are around the time that the company uh, started becoming publicly traded. So yeah, a lot of dilution, like I said, from, you know, it's, it's been basically more than 100% diluted just since it started being publicly traded in late 2020. 
Uh, all right, let's go back again, see if they've started. Nope. Apparently not. Still not started. All right. Going back to... Let's take a look at their uh, last 10K, because this is kind of informative. So this is the 10K from 2021. Um, and just, you know, take a look at these numbers, right? So revenue 2019, 2019 actually was good. We actually had a net, you know, they were actually making money. They were actually profitable in 2019. Uh, then in 2020, right, there was a huge expansion of revenue and of cost of goods sold. So the gross profit, you know, revenues went up, not quite a hundred percent, but something close to there. Um, but the cost of goods sold almost increased as much. So our gross profit is only up about 50%. Um, the operating expenses though, right, surged by like 400%. And again, this is sort of strange given that they've talked about not putting a lot of money into marketing. You know, if you're not putting a lot of money into marketing and you're only doubling your, uh, not even doubling your revenue, how are you quadrupling your operating expenses? Really, really would like more, more detail on that. Um, anyway, from 2020 to 2021, right, operating expenses doubled again, even though here, you know, the increase from 2019 to 2020, almost doubling revenue here, it's not even that, right? It's like, uh, what, 30%, something like that, 30, 40% increase in revenue, but we still doubled operating expenses. So for the past two years, we've basically been just increasing operating expenses way faster than the revenue has been increasing. You know, back in 2019, 84 um, million in revenue and 7 million in operating. And then we go up to 59 million in operating and 213 in revenue. Kind of nuts. Net income, you know, at a loss here. Um, or that, rather, net income from operations. It, it, yeah, some of these numbers just seem to get worse and worse, right? Net uh, income from operations went from positive to negative to way more negative. Net income went from positive, still positive, more positive, and then, uh, you know, huge, huge decrease. So, uh, all right, so let's go back and check again. They should have started by now. Will also be available for go. questions. Earlier this afternoon, the company issued its press release, a copy of which is available in the investor section of the company's website at www.tattooedchef.com. Before we begin, I'd like to remind everyone that the prepared remarks contain forward looking statements. Such statements involve a number of known and unknown uncertainties, many of which are outside the company's control and could cause future results, performance, or achievements to differ significantly from the results, performance, or achievements expressed or implied by such forward-looking statements. Important factors and risks that could cause or contribute to such differences are detailed in the company's filings with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Except as required by law, the company undertakes no obligation to update any forward-looking or other statements herein, whether as a result of new information, future events, or otherwise. In addition, within the earnings released and in today's prepared remarks, adjusted EBITDA is referenced. It is important to note that this is a non-GAAP financial measure that the company believes is a useful metric that better reflects the performance of its business on an ongoing basis. A reconciliation of this non-GAAP financial measure to its most directly comparable GAAP financial measure is included in today's press release, which has also been posted on the company's website. With that said, it is my pleasure to, to now turn the call over to Tattooed Chef's president and CEO, Sam Galetti. Sam, please go ahead. Thank you, Devin. Given that we just reported our full year 2021 results in March, we will keep our remarks brief. Our first quarter performance and 2022 outlook reflect the resiliency of our model, the success of our investments, and initiatives to meet growing consumer demand for plant-based food and the scope of the opportunities that we are pursuing. The realities of COVID along with global inflationary pressures are inescapable. To mitigate their effects, we are investing in activities that support our vertically integrated operating model and advance our strategies of product innovation, distribution, marketing, and strategic M&A. 
To be successful, we must continue to plan conservatively, adjust accordingly, and act with conviction, just as we've done since becoming a public company. The initiatives we undertook in 2021 to increase our capacity, elevate, elevate our brand profile, and expand our retail footprint are yielding results. We delivered our best ever quarterly revenue since coming public in 2020 with 2022 first quarter net sales of 72 million. Branded product sales rose 21% from last year's first quarter and, we, and were driven by a significant increase in U.S. distribution points, increased volume at existing retail stores, and new product in introductions. We are focused on building demand for our products and attracting and retaining consumers to our brand. During the first quarter of 2022, we added more than 10,000 points of distribution and branded SKUs rose to 90 from 78 at the end of 2021. We continue to expand our store count and now are available in more than 16,000 stores, tripling our store count since the same time last year. This has led to a doubling of our ACV as well to 54% of the U.S. MULO market. Consumption data for the first quarter is measured by SPIN's IRI continues to prove our strategies are working. We are the fastest growing health and wellness brand in the categories in which we compete, which include frozen appetizers and snacks, breakfast, entrees, vegetables, and plant-based burgers. In Mulo, our consumption sales are up 49.6% versus one year ago. For example, in frozen breakfast foods, we grew retail dollars 32% and remain the number one health and wellness brand as measured by spend. In the frozen plant-based entree category, Tattoo Chef is now the second ranked health and wellness brand only behind Amy's Kitchen and growing the fastest of all the top five brands in the category. Tattoo Chef dollar velocity and unit velocity in the same category are double that of the leading brand in the category. Frozen entrees remain one of the largest categories in the aisle, and we clearly have momentum and are taking market share. Despite significantly higher domestic and international logistic costs, our gross margins rebounded from 2021 fourth quarter to 11.3%, and we remain on plan to achieve our annual gross profit targets of 10 to 12% for fiscal year 2022. We are confident we can continue to capture share and further establish our presence in the growing and global plant-based food marketplace. Scale will help us achieve this goal. We currently operate five facilities comprised of approximately 315,000 square feet of manufacturing space. This includes our California facility, which also serves as our headquarters, our New Mexico operations, which we acquired in May 2021, Ohio, which we acquired in December 2021, and our facility in Prosetti, Italy, where we grow much of, pro much of product. Today, we expect these facilities to generate 280 to 285 million of revenue in 2022, with the capacity at present to produce upwards of 600 million in annual revenue over the next two to three years. Leveraging this scale is a key focus for 2022. We are focused on driving efficiencies and making the investments necessary to put us on a path to achieving long-term sustainable profitability. Under the leadership of our COO, Gaspar Gorassi, we are introducing automation and robotics across our company. Our automation and robotics initiatives will allow us to improve operational efficiencies, increase production capacity, lower operating and labor costs, increase gross profit, and meet our long-term ESG strategy. We are also committed to fortifying our vertically integrated operating model by bringing certain capabilities in-house. This not only provides us with more control, but is also designed to generate material cost savings. For example, we are near completion of the construction of our in-house food and safety inspection laboratory within our California facility. Our turnkey raw material and finished goods cold storage facility located in Vernon, California, became operational in April 2022. This facility will house refrigerated, frozen, and ambient goods. 
As we discussed on last quarter's call, we estimate that this facility would produce an approximately 50% annualized cost savings as compared to using third-party storage, with initial savings expected to be realized in the quarter in the current second quarter. We are also diversifying our product mix outside of the freezer aisle to refrigerated and ambient. This not only broadens our retail shelf space, but it also introduces products that carry lower production and shipping costs when compared to frozen products. Our New Mexico facilities commenced the production of Tattoo Chef burritos and quesadillas during the first quarter of this year and is slated to produce salty snacks by the end of 2022. Ohio is scheduled to condense production and distribution of our refrigerated Tattoo Chef oat butter bars in the second quarter of 2022. We are very proud of what we have accomplished, and I am more excited and optimistic than ever about where we can take this brand in the years ahead. Still, we are mindful that we are operating in an environment with more than its fair share of economic uncertainty. We will therefore take a measured approach to our growth, balancing expansion with prudent fiscal management and initiatives designed to deliver material ROI. We have to date operated with exceptional low leverage for a high growth company and will maintain that posture as we continue to expand our business and brand. I'd like to turn over the call to Sarah to discuss our innovation and marketing initiative. Sarah? We started off the year strong by introducing a slate of new products designed to satisfy everybody's plant-based side. These delicious plant-based foods have been created to appeal to the nostalgia we all feel for our favorite childhood meals made in a sustainable, healthier way. For example, our plant-based pizzas are one of the signature items that put Tattooed Chef on the map and continue to be some of our fastest turning SKUs. Americans love pizza. Frozen retail pizzas alone are a $6 billion business up 9% year over year as of April 2021, according to IRI data. This year, we are expanding the plant-based pizza experience with both unique flavor profiles and nostalgic flavors. Some of my personal favorites are our new vegan wood-fired pizzas, including the Rainbow Steak, Killer Bee, and Brock and Roll. Our innovation will allow consumers to experience different cuisines and flavors in a delicious, 100% vegan wood-fired pizza, and we are excited to see them in the market. Our new frozen product categories include handheld burritos, both breakfast and all occasion, as well as quesadillas and Mexican entrees that incorporate a variety of tasty plant-based meat alternatives and ingredient combinations, such as the plant-based chorizo and egg burrito, the plant-based al pastor quesadilla, and plant-based chicken mole enchiladas. Mexican cuisine as a category is lagging behind others when it comes to plant-based innovation. Mexican food is a, now more popular than hamburgers in American dining. We see a true unmet need in this category and believe it is ready for a chef's modern take on traditional Mexican cuisine. We are also significantly expanding our vegan line across several of our existing product portfolios by incorporating vegan eggs, cheese, and proprietary meat alternatives, including plant-based pork into our meals. And finally, we are expanding beyond the freezer aisle with our refrigerated oat butter bar. We wanted to create a better bar than what is available today in terms of nutritional benefits and taste. We knew that we could compete by coming out with something different, yet familiar, and tap into the next trends of what consumers are looking to buy. This is one of the first bars made with oat butter and to be adaptogen powered. The concept is feed your mind with a focus on brain fuel and reducing anxiety. Many bars today are still packed with sugar, soy, or filler ingredients that are not familiar to consumers. Every ingredient in our bar has a purpose. Our Tattoo Chef bars are vegan, soy-free, gluten-free, non-GMO, contain no sugar alcohols, and have between 12 to 15 grams of protein per bar. In terms of our marketing efforts, as we have shared in previous earnings calls, our goal is to meet consumers where, where they are across TV, social channels, retail, and experiential events. In 2022, we are accelerating with our most aggressive marketing to date, more than doubling our spend to build consumer awareness and engagement. In Q1, we did a significant television buy, reaching 280 million U.S. consumers. We are pleased with the results to date as we saw an increase in household awareness growing from 11% at year-end 2021 to 17% at the end of Q1. In addition to continuing our TV advertising spend, 
we rolled out new social campaigns and programming designed to expand our community, build loyalty to our Tattooed Chef brand, and create awareness for our evolving product line. I'll now turn the conversation over to Stephanie for a discussion of what our results. Stephanie. Good afternoon, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, the line for Stephanie Dykeman is uh, disconnected. So uh, we're trying to connect with Stephanie Dykeman. Uh, please kindly stay connected. Thank you. <laughs> 